Andy Johnson, understanding dyslexia starts with understanding the reading process. Students with dyslexia or severe reading difficulties make up 3 to 5 percent of all students depending on the model of reading that is used to define and understand reading. Now, how you define reading affects a lot of things related to research. The type of research that is used, the questions that get asked, the data that get collected, the types of measures used to collect data, and how data are interpreted. If you define reading simply as sounding out words, well, you're going to look for something different and ask different questions than you would if you define reading as creating meaning with print. There's a lot of bad research out there and a whole bunch of ineffective reading interventions based on the premise that reading is simply sounding out words. Two models, the phonological model and the neurocognitive or transactive model. Now, according to the phonological model, reading is thought to evolve four sub-processes. You perceive the words and letters on the page, you put the sounds to all the letters in each word, put the individual sounds together to identify words, and you put the words together to create ideas, and this creates a form of speech in the head that occurs as you are reading. Words, phonological processing, speech in the head that you listen to as you read, and these ideas then go up to the cortex. It's a one-way flow of information. Well, that seems to make sense, doesn't it? This speech in the head that you listen to? Proficient readers, according to this model, are good sounder-outers. They can sound out words proficiently. Struggling readers are bad sounder-outers. They have word uh, sounding out deficiencies. Struggling readers need sounding out word instruction and practice. That's how you create good sounder outers according to this, uh, uh, this model. So you get a lot of sounding out instruction and practice. You see words in isolation so, so you're not distracted by creating meaning or enjoying good books. However, sounding out instruction you get marginal increases in sounding out words and isolation. You see words in isolations. And in reality, we do not see words in isolation. They're always found in some context. Sounding out word instruction, there's little transfer to reading words in authentic context, in sentences and books. No long-term improvement in the ability to create meaning with text. And reading is creating meaning. The neurocognitive model, sometimes called the transactive model, reading is the process of creating meaning with print. Without meaning, I'm not reading. Reading is not sounding out words. Sounding out words without creating meaning means you're just barking at print. The brain uses three cueing systems to identify the words as we read. The semantic context, syntactical grammar word order, and the phonological letter sounds. We need activities and instruction to develop all three. Transaction, both parties give to something in a transaction, says that there is a two-way flow of information as we read. Information goes from the page up to the thalamus, and eventually up to the cortex, and we use the three cueing systems to identify the individual words. That's one way, but brain imaging research is actually showing that there's almost 10 times more information flowing down to the thalamus and down to the page as we read. We're using what's in the head to understand what is on the page. So we're using background knowledge as well as the three cueing systems to identify words as we read. Knowledge stored in the cortex, again, is important. What is in the head is used to create meaning. That is why beginning readers should read things they know about and uh, the words should be included in their lexicon for beginning readers. Expert readers do not read word by word and letter by letter. We use minimal letter clues. And as you look at that, you are not looking at each letter. You're not even looking at each word. 
You're using the information in your head to fill in the blanks. That's that top-down flow of information. According to the neurocognitive model, a proficient reader can orchestrate a whole bunch of strategies to construct meaning. You're using knowledge and context clues to predict and infer your monitoring comprehension, and you're using fix-up strategies when comprehension breaks down. That's what proficient readers do. A struggling reader is ineffective in the use or coordination of strategies used to create meaning with print. So we teach some of these strategies. Understanding dyslexia starts with understanding the reading process. If you think of reading simply as sounding out words, you do not understand dyslexia. Dyslexia is a designation for those on the lower end of the reading curriculum, usually two standard deviations below the mean. A condition whereby one has extreme problems using the skills or coordinating the strategies necessary to create meaning with print. That's a more apt definition of dyslexia. It is not a brain disorder.